Hi, my name's Scott and 3FJP. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about DX spotting and how to set up DX spotting in Amateur Contact Log. DX spotting is really cool. It gives all of us as amateur radio operators the opportunity to share the stations that we are hearing and see who else is hearing other stations that we may not be aware of so we can work entities that we might need or, or guys, for, you know, friends that we uh, haven't caught up with in a while we can find them a whole lot easier so I, I really encourage you to use DX spotting and to spot stations that you hear as you're working or tuning around the band. Uh, setting up DX spotting is quite easy you can click settings DX spotting configure and there are a couple of fields that are uh, most of which are already pre-filled for you uh, your data source is always going to be telnet host unless you're networking and that that's kind of a separate subject you're gonna enter in the host and dxspots.com and, and some others are options in the software but you're not limited to those you can put in any telnet host that you like you can Google Telnet hosts and find that there are quite a number to choose from. You can then enter the Telnet port, which that setting is often 23. If it's something different, you'll find that as you Google and, and uh, check the uh, various options. You want your call sign in the uh, uh, call sign field. And then uh, for a login optional login command, show forward slash DX is a good option. It will show about the last 30 spots. Now, uh, your percentage on the main form is, is how large the spots window is going to appear. So that's basically all you need to get started. To connect, click Enable DX Spotting, and voila, we're connected. The spots are streaming in. The main form has been reconfigured. We are good to go. Now I'll close this for a minute. Well, let me ex explain this. You, you see a, a number of spots here that aren't appearing on the main form. Um, the reason for that is if you click more filtering, I have this filtered so that only stations in my continent who are posting spots will appear on the main form. The reason for that is propagation isn't going everywhere all over the world at the same time typically. So if a station in Australia spots a station in Europe, that's the, I might be able to hear the station, I might not. On the other hand, if, if someone in the United States or North America hears a station in Europe, there's a much better chance that I'll be able to hear it too. So I recommend using at least your continent, if not your country, and you can also, if you want to refine it even more, you could uh, select your country and you could select, say, the, the um, second and third call areas. And now, only stations, um, for example, uh, KX5 posted a spot. He spotted uh, S59 November. But had I had this filtering, he would not have, that spot would not have appeared had I had the, the two and three in. Since I didn't, at the time that he posted the spot, we can see that uh, his spot appears right here. And if we go back, there's a, a few more things. You can filter by mode, um, either no filter, CW only, or SSB. You can choose to see only DX spots that are in the general portion of the USA band allocation and you can block uh, various bands that you don't want to see. You can also uh, in the case of AC log uh, block entities where the entity has been confirmed on both band and mode. I don't typically use that however for the contesting software there is a similar function where you can block contest duplicates based on the uh, duplicate criteria for each individual contest. That is really nice because you can be sure that 
all the new DX spots that are coming in are stations. You haven't worked yet, so you can just click on those guys and, and, and know right away that they're not going to be duplicates, assuming they're spotted <laughs> accurately. And uh, you can uh, uh, keep your Q QSO rates up and, and, and uh, roll with that. So that, that's a lot of fun, too. Now, we've got DX spots rolling in. Um, we can also filter, if, if we only want to see spots in the continent of Af Africa, say, we could deselect the others. Um, I like to keep in AC log everything coming in, but that is also an option as well. You can also have some audio alerts set, so when a spot comes in, the uh, details of the spot will be spoken to you. And that's really handy. If, if you're doing something else, and you are uh, in the middle of a, a project where you can't keep your eyes on the log. So we have DX bots rolling in, and we will now um, set up the form to use the band map. To do that, what we're first going to do is make room for the band map by grabbing uh, AC logs right edge. I'm going to left click and drag it over. Ah, we'll drag it over about this far just to give us room to work. And now we will press Control E to bring up the band map. And there it is. And to fill the empty space, we'll drag this back. So, needed spot. Okay. I want 20 SSB. Okay, there you go. Um, that was an example of the audio alerts. All right, just to give you a quick example of how the band map works. If I click on a spot. We're instantly there and we hear uh, we hear Charlie Tango 3 Mike Delta. You'll also notice as you click on a DX spot that the information regarding the spot is retrieved. For example, if I click on Oscar Mike 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, I can see that uh, we've worked twice before. The image for the station is retrieved from, from QRZ if you have a QRZ XML subscription, and all the pertinent information for the current contact is filled in the log. So it gets you all set up and ready to go. And just as another example, we can click here. And uh, Serge, I actually worked him yesterday. Um, so uh, it's, it's just a quick way to move from one station to another. This is a really nice feature for contesting. You can set the filtering so that only non-duplicate spots appear on the band map. So this always becomes a checklist for contesting. Now there's not too many spots right now. It's a weekday. There's no contest going on. But of course during contest weekends it's full of spots. And it's really nice because you can click on the spot, work the station, right click it, and that's gone. Now you've got the, the next station up. Click on it and work it and uh, just move right on down down the list. So that's really cool. Now, you might find at times, and you definitely will find during contesting, where there's a lot of spots and it's very difficult to see what all's there because the spots are bunched together. Well, first thing you can do, and I typically leave auto scale on, that puts the, all the stations within the range of the form. So, uh, for example, once I clear this guy, we're once again to the top and bottom of the form. So that uh, that makes it nice that way. If there are additional stations, sometimes even with that, it's still bunched together. You can give the form the focus, roll your mouse wheel forward, and you can zoom right in on the area that you want to see. You can also left click and drag, and that allows you to move through the band that way. You can also click, or I'm sorry, press 
the F key while this has the focus and now the zoom is set fairly, fairly narrowly but the rig will or the map I'm sorry will follow the rig so for example if I click on a spot on 20 it's, it's set right to the center we see the next spot is 14.246 so I'll manually tune the rig up to 14.246 and okay I'm finished tuning and there we go so it, it the band map will follow your rig that way and you can clear that as well by right, right clicking on the zoom a couple other things to be aware of you notice the various colors on the DX spots yellow bold the spot is is new it's less than three minutes old when it becomes yellow is between three and five minutes old white spots are five to ten minutes old light gray are 10 to 20 minutes and if it's a gray then it's greater than 20 minutes old the behavior that I demonstrated for the band map also applies to this list at the bottom of the main form uh, clicking on that does the same thing you can also press Control shift D to bring up a larger version of the form at the bottom and you can customize the size to the way you like and you can uh, click on any anything you're looking for there um, this also shows how whether the contact is confirmed or unconfirmed and in, in this case or new in your log and of course I'm, I've also I'm also set up to show who is using LOTW so when I see a spot particularly that's this new uh, in this case st. Martin is new for uh, 15 CW for me and I see that he's an LOTW user well I'm particularly excited about working him so I would click on the spot and uh, try to make the queue to control how you want your new identifications to be displayed you can click settings new contact and QSL alert options and you can turn it off completely you can alert if new that's new overall so if you, if you work at a station if you work a entity on 80 meters um, then he's spotted on 40 meters in a different mode it's, it's still confirmed uh, you could make that more specific by band or by mode or new on current band and mode now if you're just starting out and everything's new maybe, maybe you start with alert if new but uh, over time your goals kind of increase you might have five band DXCC as an objective so you would want to know by band and probably by mode whether a entity is new or not if you want to post a spot that you have worked you can use the spot last button that's not there by default but you can click settings edit uh, edit fields displayed to add that button and you can do that from here and I have another video that explains the details about that just clicking spot last and that, that shoots the contact right out and will show up on the network or the alternatively press control D to uh, quickly bring up the setup form you can click spot last here and this does give you the option um, you can add additional comments such as big signal and then if I were to click send it would show up here uh, it's been a while since I've worked the station so I won't actually send it now but that's how that would work so that about sums up the DX spotting and DX spotting forms uh, thank you so much for watching my, again, my name is Scott, N3FJP73, and God bless.